So my customer calls me, right, and he's, uh, it's Friday, and he's like, hey, can you get a ceramic coating done for me? Uh, I just saw one of my small trailers to haul toys with, I used to get ceramic coated by Monday, and he also wanted this sled done. And I'm like, okay, um, yeah, I, I, think, I think we can do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, before we continue on, a lot of you guys have been asking me, hey, how do I make my videos? What am I using? What microphones am I using? Do I use the gimbal? Am I freehanding it? And those are all awesome questions. I didn't get a chance to get back to you guys sooner because as some of you may or may not know, um, our previous computer, the R11 by Dell, the Alienware actually died. And here's a little backstory on that. The R11 had too short of a life. He was a great computer for video editing. However, he had some internal failures, not once, but twice with his last failure proving fatal. He leaves behind his two dogs, Sammy and Doc Tori, who now have to share a water bowl due to financial constraints for his wife, I, Judy, you know, who cleans for her full-time job. Unfortunately, we can see her here cleaning after the funeral in order to save costs. These are the final moments of the R11, and I do want to caution you, viewer discretion is advised. After having his second motherboard failure in less than a month, things were not looking good. <laughs> so young. Why? Why? R11 passed away from congested motherboard failure, which also caused arterial PSU failure. However, I worked gently and quickly to remove any other organs that could be used in our next build because as you know, the show must go on. I was devastated, but I also realized I had to get the new PC up and running quickly. Yes, we got the, we got the processor. We got the processor, so we can, we can build our next, our next build. <laughs> I tried everything that I could. I did what I did what any computer owner would do. I did my best. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it together. I'm gonna keep it together. If you guys are interested in learning more about video editing for your own detail shop to save costs, make sure to drop a comment below. But let's get to the ceramic coating on this Chris Brandt trailer. Now, just to reiterate, this customer did come to me on like Friday midday and said, hey, Joe, can you get this uh, trailer ceramic coated and also get my ski -Doo? Um, detailed, not necessarily ceramic coated, but get it detailed. And I was like, sure. So when we pulled the trailer in um, that first night, when he brought it into us that night, we noticed all of the micro scratches. And mind you, this customer takes very good care of his equipment. This is his second trailer. Um, that's very, it's identical to the other one that we ceramic coated. I never launched a video for that one, but this one we did decide to do a video because of how easily it's a black trailer. You could see all the scratches, all of the swirls. And you know, the most important thing is we're on a time crunch and we have a limited crew size on last minute notice. So we have to devise a plan of how to address and how to attack the situation. But as I mentioned earlier, I had done another one of these trailers for him before. The only difference was this one was like a grayish color versus now we're dealing with an all black trailer. But first things first, it's time to go straight for the wash. And we like to do a spray foam cannon because most of you may or may not know the spray foam cannon has multiple purposes. One, yes, it does look cool, but basically that's giving us a nice barrier um, so that when we start brushing this thing down with mitts and brushes, um, we're not going to scratch it. So the main purpose of the snow cannon and soap in general uh, when washing a vehicle is to give it a lubrication field. Now, one thing I like to tell my guys is to have fun. I like to have fun with my guys. I like to laugh, I like to joke, make fun of myself. We make fun of each other because detailing is a very strenuous job and I think it's overlooked about how much work actually goes into these projects. And so I love that phone with my guys and uh, that's something you'll see throughout the video.
Now in this next step, what we're doing, it's hard to see, but we're literally taking a piece of clay. It's like a putty-like substance, and we're rubbing it across the trailer, which is gonna give us a very smooth surface to work on after we're done buffing. Now, the main purpose of the clay bar, there's a lot of misconceptions about it, you know, that it makes your car glossier or it'll remove scratches. No, it can remove scuff marks that are like surface scuffs, not scratches, um, and it will make your paint super smooth. So what it's pulling off is like that brake dust or, or other surface contaminants. I wouldn't say sap or tar because it's almost impossible to get it off with that. I mean, maybe if you have fresh overspray, you can get it off. But in my experience, a clay bar has one job, and that's to get the paint nice and smooth, get those uh, the, the general fallout and contamination in the environment off of your vehicle. One other thing I wanted to point out is the California Water Blade, which is a squeegee that we use to help dry this a lot faster. I put a link in the description for you so you guys can have access to one of these bad boys too. One of my favorite things to do, as you can hear that we're doing now, um, is to go over the project with our team, decide what pads are we gonna use, you know, inspect the amount of scratches and decide what kind of pads are we gonna use, what speeds do you think we're gonna go with, and looking at this trailer, trailers scratch up very easily, so ceramic coatings are ideal to use on a trailer, so I'm very glad he's doing this because if you looked at the holograms on that before there and then look at the after, um, it's very obvious why ceramic coatings and buffing is amazing. Now, one of the challenges we had going into here was my team was fairly new at the time. Um, Nick had never polished such a large project and Zach had just came back. And the funny thing about this is that Nick actually pulled the buffer off too soon because it's been too long and you know threw all the compound in my face no big deal we'll dial that in these projects are perfect they can't hurt the paint but nevertheless we went ahead and wiped off the compound and i wasn't very happy with the results none of us were so we used a fine polish with like a medium pad we used a medium pad with a fine polish or, or a heavy polish it, it it seemed like no matter what we tried we couldn't get the results that we wanted now, if we had a larger budget to work with, we would have been able to make this thing shine even more than you saw in that before and after, but the customer had a $1,000 budget. Now, you're probably thinking, Joe, how are you going to ceramic coat this for $1,000? Well, this customer brings me, you know, about 20 or 30 toys to do a year. So he does get a discount, like our dealership discounts. Um, but after toying around for a little while, and getting all the guys on the same page, we finally developed a method here. Now, Zach is, like I said, he had just came back. He is um, a veteran when it comes to buffing and polishing and ceramic coatings. And as you can see here, when he flips that switch on, he goes right to business mode. And that's what I love about Zach. You know, he's very determined. Look at it, he's got perfectly straight lines. He's gonna do his crisscross pattern. He's watching his speed. He's watching his pressure. And you know, he gets a little off there, but it's so, it's so minuscule that even I see veterans that have been doing it for 20 years not buff as well as he does. So after uh, Zach and Nick both had a shot at this, I went ahead and gave it a shot. I don't remember exactly what compound we used. Again, this was taken back in like January or February of 2022. You know, we're now in September, um, but I did a nice little test spot. We wiped off the compound and we did get the results that we were looking for. Again, it wasn't perfect, but this was, you know, it was just the first pass and we we're gonna get dialed, we're gonna dial it in. Uh, but if you take a close look here, you can see a huge difference in that little section I just wiped off versus coming back over, you know, to that right side where Nick is. It's it's a pretty, pretty nice difference there. So we got all the guys on the same page. We got all the right compounds out. We got our pads out. We put some music on and we just started going to town. At this point in the detail, I was getting pretty excited because I could see the difference and I I was actually really happy. I didn't think it was going to come out looking as good um, with just a one step polish, but with the right team and the right people, you know, you can make anything happen. So I actually looked at the team and I was like, guys, uh, this looks really, really good, which is something I never really say because I 
I'm my biggest, I'm my biggest critic. Say that again. Do what? Say that again. Say what again? Say it again. I never heard you say that word. Say it one more time. Say what again? <laughs> um. So you heard Devin out back there trying to squeeze it out of me. Um, and like I said, trying, but it did look better than good. It looked great. I was super happy. You know, I was celebrating, you know, if you see me laughing and having a good time at work, that means, you know, I'm relieved. I'm very confident in our work. I'm very confident in our team. And that's because, you know, you're working on a project this large with such a short deadline and you start getting the results that you wanted to see. You start getting mirror finishes and you it's a huge relief. One of the problems that we were um, coming across during the detail was that when you're wiping off the product, if you're not wiping it off with like very, very nice, if not brand new rags and you're not wiping it off very gently, you actually can leave uh, micro scratch is onto the surface that you just polished and just made look like a mirror. You can actually wipe it, you know, you're wiping, you scratch it. And so the whole process of this uh, is, it's very stressful for me because I take such pride in my work. I take such pride in my team and, and the quality of work and customer service. So again, you see me dance, you see me laugh, you know, it's not boasting. It's just, I'm very proud. Look at, look at the results. Like who, who wouldn't be proud to take something that looked like that to start off with and turn it into a masterpiece? A very important step I learned in ceramic coatings is to use a surface prep cleaner. We use GT uh, Cleanse, which just helps the ceramic coating bond properly to the painted surface. So we're gonna go ahead and do this to the entire trailer and get it ready for the ceramic coating. So keep in mind, using a surface prep is so important because if you're not, you're trying to put ceramic coating right on top of the polish or whatever you just used, which then the ceramic coating isn't gonna last and it's not gonna bond properly. I'm not always able to get you products that we use directly because they're professional grade or they're hazardous to ship. However, I did put links in the description of products that I do like and I would approve on your next ceramic coating. So you guessed it, the trailer is looking amazing. It's been prepped with the GT Cleanse, or also known as a surface prep, so it's ready to be coated. In this particular coating, we are using Tech 580, which is made by Technician's Choice under their ECP uh, umbrella, which is called Entire Car protection it's a very great product it's very inexpensive you can probably grab a bottle between 30 and 50 dollars online i'll put a link to that as well um i would say as far as warranty goes plan on it lasting about a year if you're gonna beat the hell out of your machine if you're gonna run through a car wash all the time and you're just gonna neglect it and take it to you know just use any old soap on it it's not gonna last just like any other coating but if you're gonna take care of your car you're gonna take care of your trailer this this coating on his trailer because of how well he takes care of it this trailer is gonna sit in a heated uh, storage unit when it's not being used it's gonna last some several years I would say at least three to five years and that's why I love the ECP products inexpensive it does have the longevity you still have to take care of it but this is one of the main reasons why we were able to do this coating for a thousand dollars because it's not we're not paying four hundred dollars for a bottle of our like gt quartz per se or some of those gt quartz lines that we use are upwards of five hundred dollars just for one of the coatings and we would need multiple so we'd have a thousand dollars alone just in product now when devin zooms in here you're gonna see some micro scratches but compared to what it came in like it's night and day and then also we have very high intensity lights beaming on this thing so out in the sunlight in your normal in your normal facilities and outdoors you're not gonna see that so we're reaching the final ends here where the coating has been applied the befores and after speak for themselves i mean look at the gloss um, the paint correction came out nice we removed a lot of the oxidation and the swirls but i did forget a key part there was a, some touch-up paint that i did not do which you should do before the coating. However, it's not a big issue. I'm gonna go ahead and do the touch-up paint and then I'll come back and ceramic coat over that.
Now there is a product I didn't talk to you guys about. It's called Wizards Mist and Shine. It's one of my must haves in my shop. It's expensive. I put a link in the description below for you, but guys, it's, it's a must have. It will give you, even if you don't detail a vehicle and you just wipe it down with it, it will make it look like you detailed it, but it's great at just removing any like last minute greasy spots and to give you that showroom shine. It doesn't affect your, your ceramic coatings or anything that you put on your vehicle. Just check it out and trust me on this. But guys, we are going to get to the ceramic coating and detail of this ski do in our next video. Hopefully you liked the video. Devin's about to crash into the trees. Okay, you're not. <laughs> As that concludes our ceramic coating video, make sure to check the links I put in the uh, description to Amazon and other stores as well. So you can buy those products so you can detail just like us and have access to some of the same stuff that we do for your next ceramic coating project. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I need to get my jog on guys, so take care. Oh yeah, and also guys, don't forget, keep it clean Grand Rapids.